Hey everybody, it's Robert Dunk from Art Top 10, and I'm very happy today to be chatting with Simon Strother. Simon, hello. Hi there, Rob. How are you doing? Well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Surviving Looking a few... at this technology and these screens. Yeah, well, the, the, a, bit, a bit of Zoom pausing is just normality these days, the new normal, isn't it? Thank you for your invitation. It was, it was very interesting to me because I thought... Right, there's this lockdown period, and this is no address, and what do I have to say about it? Has my practice changed that much because of it? Well, maybe not. And then I thought about the sketchbook, and I thought, well, these little devices we have in our pockets now, um, the little iPhone, they're, they're kind of like our sketchbooks, or they are for me. I mean, I have a book where I make drawings and note down ideas. Okay. Around drawings. But I do take so many drafts, and it's... This thing's got about 10,000 images in it at the moment. Um, and I thought, right, well, I'll look. It was quite an interesting activity. I'll look through this period and I'll draw some things out. And maybe that way I'll, I'll remember it better, too. Uh, okay. Different. It's quite nice, actually. I like the, I, I like the idea. I think we, we had a little chat, didn't you, that I also use my phone in a similar way to, to take photos of any of these things. And I've got something like 150,000 photos on it. It's insane. But um, mm. but I think you're absolutely right. It, it's it's like a crazy tool we have, isn't it? These days, mm. as our um, our art thing. But yeah, so 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 when you were looking through the photos, what, what what did you find? What did it show you about lockdown or how you're feeling? Well, I, I think what I thought is is a lot of this stuff is documentation, is a record of a time which um, it used to be a lot slower and a lot more precious. I mean, we mentioned between us, didn't we, the 24 or 36 exposures and they had to be carefully made and then we'd send them away and we'd wait for them to come back. Absolutely. And these things act more diary or a fashion photographer, the way they'd work, you know, and we'd yeah. choose something. Um, so looking through it, I thought, well, what are these documents? You know, I, I was furloughed from my employment, so I actually had quite a bit more time um, and I thought, well, how will that affect my my practice? And it's a time to sort of uh, challenge some of the assumptions or the perhaps patterns and um, habits of working, because habits are not necessarily so so useful uh, yeah. always. Um, and I thought, well, in a way too, with this overload of information, and even more importantly at the moment, the amount of state control, for better or worse, well, that's going yeah, on. Indeed. <laughs> And state then manipulation. We, we need to sort of recover our agency, our sense of agency. Okay. And one way we maybe arguably do this is through art practice, art making. Interesting. But also, we're kind of all becoming obese, aren't we? <laughs> I certainly am. You know, physically as well, because <laughs> people, but, you know, we, we, we're, um, I think as human beings, we need to produce and not just consume. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I think this relates at a base level to making art too. Mm. So I suppose those were the two thoughts I had about agency rather than consumption and um, feeling constrained by the around us in this moment. Well, that's interesting actually, because because the whole um, consumption thing is 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 it's been there before, hasn't it? Really, but the lockdown thing does throw up these things in a more specific fashion for you to look at, doesn't it? And I think the lockdown experience was so different for different people. And maybe mm. artists, if you traditionally think of them as people who like, you know, sitting in their studio, um, yeah. think their thoughts, they're quite private people. Mm. And maybe they're happier than most. Maybe yeah. it disturbs them less. I, I tend to work at night. That's the time I have. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's when I want to work. That's when there's a sort of psychic space for me. Yeah. I observed. And I, well, that was one of the things I thought I can challenge, and I did. And I came to the conclusion that actually, no, I do need to work at night. Really? I'm not sure why. But <laughs> um, so even with this sort of supposedly unlimited freedom, yeah. <laughs> or limited yeah. freedom, it's always yeah. um, I, But I tested that idea. Um, I also thought I always work inside. I, I'm not relating immediately to a visual stimulus. I'm not looking at something and yeah. drawing it. I'm looking at the same time as I'm working. Um, well, I thought, right, okay, go outside and do something. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe you uh, 
maybe you need to challenge that assumption. And I found I need to work inside at night. That's <laughs> quite. So, so what, what, what time do you normally work from during the night? Like right through the night? So. Well, it depends because I like, I've had a curious relationship to the whole idea of a studio for, for, for many, many years, ever since graduated. Okay. And I saw people who basically the effort of paying for a studio mm. and, uh, in order to realize a certain ambition yeah. meant that they couldn't be in there. It was <laughs> Financially, um, also it's quite prescriptive. I'm not sure that I want to be in a, a warehouse with lots of other artists around me. Mm. You, know? Um, you know, in art school, I was around a lot of people, obviously, all those years ago, and I enjoyed it. That was one of the best things about it. But yeah. it wasn't always conducive to making work. No, no, no. It was very conducive to talking and Having fun. making decisions and being challenged, which is why you're there. So. I did a bit of traveling and I thought I would invert it. This was my idea, so I was maybe in my very early 20s. Yeah. And I would make the studio suitcase, make it portable. Okay, very cool. And I would go into the gallery and treat it as a studio and make stuff there with the materials I had collected in my suitcase. Oh, you know? very nice. So um, that was one way of looking at the studio. At times I have had a studio, not for very long periods. I tried working at home in a room because the good thing about a studio is you can shut the door. Mm -hmm. in, and then you encounter it. So with a room, you, I uh, would, would would tinker too much, you know? I'd yeah. go back in, do something, think about it. At times, when there was no room or studio and I was living in a room, everything was material, and that was interesting too. Oh, uh, yeah, intriguing. So I could rearrange the furniture, and I noticed that the sheets were the colours of a Mondrian painting. Oh, right, could, nice. Uh, in a sort of... constructive way look at the three sets of um knife fork and spoon in the drawer and think how many ways could i arrange them you know Intriguing. maybe absurd things like that could be yeah. done with domestic items yeah but then the studio and going into the studio and the screen it didn't it didn't seem it didn't seem quite right and imagine you have a meal and a glass of wine and you go in and you ruin everything it's not a good idea <laughs> so what came, um was uh Setting out a space, yeah. setting out a space for activity, laying out the materials I was going to use, making a decision about. So it's all small scale recently. Okay. And then having, if you like, a session of activity, of work with these materials, and then clearing it away. So very much sure. the um, arranging, presenting, king, clearing away. It uh, sounds quite actually, like the answer story. to your question was a lot shorter. <laughs> it could be something like uh, midnight or 11 o'clock to a.m. or it could be a.m. Uh, it could be something between those times. It, it's quite intriguing because a lot of it sounds like it's sort of almost like a performance for yourself you're creating. But, um... Well, I think there's a performative, performative element in the work, definitely. And what you're left with is maybe the result of an activity. I don't see it as a performance. I might, might prefer the word ritual, perhaps. Okay. Um, because yes, that's for myself uh, to help me to make. Yeah. But um, the result is something else. It's a two-dimensional. Um, uh, it's a sheet of paper. Marks on it's, the current. It's, <laughs> it's intriguing though, because 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 it, it's almost as if really your your whole life or being is focused around creating the art, but every everything is feeding into it, the way you live through the day, essentially, is building up to the point of where you create something. Well, I think it's very interesting. If, how do you relate to circumstance? And I think there are two ways. You could say, I'm a victim of my circumstances. Hmm. There's very little room for freedom. Or we say what you do is conditioned by your circumstances. And that has without deliberately imposing it, a, a political and sociological dimension, I would say. Because, um, because so for example, my, um, my works are, I would say, poor. <laughs> you know, they're, they're small and they're poor, and perhaps that's what's necessary at this time. There's a lot of talk about austerity, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Um, who's to say if I, I have a 
huge amount in a huge studio, they wouldn't be enormous. I'm not being critical in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I understand. I do a responsibility with all of in this world, especially a very concerned now with the country and such a Oh, you're back, you're back. Sorry, I lost you for a moment. But, um, mm. um, you... Don't worry, I'll, I'll edit out you the bits where we have a bit of a glitchy madness. Uh, I'm just waiting. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I've lost you, Rob. It's gone very, you went very, very slow. Are yeah, we back? We... We had a crazy moment. Don't, don't worry, I'll, I'll edit out any of the crazy moments, so it'll just look like we're geniuses. Uh, it's mm -hmm. actually, it's actually. Uh, should we have, should we have a look at some of the work? Because I'm, I'm quite curious to see what it looks like now. I, I know how you make it. Um, this sort of diary. Go on. Yeah, I'm going to try it. Yeah. Um, obviously, okay. things are going a bit odd at the moment. <laughs> so. Here we go. Um, if I go to share. Yeah, that looks good. And yeah, if we get to this, do you see that? Yeah, I can see that. It's just, it's a little bit, it's not sort of pixel perfect, but it's there, but it's there. I can see the keyboard, the piece of paper, and a screen with the black and white square sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, I was trying to edit some images of old work. I, I think a lot of people at this time have been thinking about the archive. And that's a typewritten text from 92 that I was copying. Man. And I'd said to somebody, almost as a complaint, you know, I've never spent so much time looking at a screen. Yeah, and then yeah. I thought, well, that's an odd thing to say, because that's what painters do, perhaps, arguably. <laughs> they look at a screen. Um, well, that's quite intriguing. Well, you said when and, we're looking at the canvas, we're looking at the screen as well. Yeah. And so here we are looking at a screen on a screen. And um, I think the difference maybe is to do with agency and physicality in the world. And of course, this, you know, reminded me, as I'm sure it does, you looked at it, of Malevich. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not the intention, but it did. So this is the work that's sitting behind me. And it's maybe about um, 30 years old. Uh, so I made it when I was at college. Huh? And I think again, it relates maybe to the screen and to the field. And it's a sheet of newsprint paper. Yeah. Very cheap paper. Intriguing. And, uh, Conservators are amazed that it's lasted so long. <laughs> and it's sitting on two canvases covered with black, industrially dyed uh, canvas. Oh, it's sitting on two canvases. That's why it's got that line down the centre. Yeah, yeah. They're two separate canvases Intriguing. put together. And then the page kind of is a field that, that unifies it. And I can remember even now when I was making it, there were two things in my mind. And and one of them, I think it was some movie mogul who said, ideas aren't worth the paper they're printed on. And I thought, right, what's the paper worth? Let's look at the paper. Yeah. <laughs> so this is um, a much more recent work. Okay. Um, and again, I'm surprised by how little things have shifted. I'm not really disappointed, but uh, again, there's that field, there's the sense of uh, a screen or a ground, and there's an idea of inscription and dispersal, maybe. What's it? What's it? Ah. Made, what's it made from? Oh, sorry, the previous one. Yeah, this is watercolor and ink, and it's uh, six by eight inches. The sheet of paper. Okay. So Thank just what, so, so the edges of the paper. Did you sort of you didn't burn them or I mean, what did you do to sort of rough them up, as it were? Ah, well, that's not the edge of the paper you're looking at. That's the edge of the painted field. Okay. The blue. So the edge of the paper, you don't actually quite see on the image because it, okay. it doesn't register properly. And obviously okay. you're looking at it bigger than it really is. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the white is, the edge of the paper is untouched. It's white. Hmm. It's the watercolour paper. Intriguing. It's quite and a strange thing. It's, it's difficult to under, it, it's, it's, um, it's got all these sort of senses of different things in it, like strangely taken photographs and things. And I think the scale, the, the, the six by eight scale relates to, and the margin perhaps, doesn't it? It reminds us yeah. of photographs. <laughs> yeah, really cool. Hmm. Maybe President, these lines in the center there, they're, they're cut, they're actually cut into the paper. They're oh, really? Inscribed, yeah. Intriguing. So this I thought about too. I thought, well, in lockdown, we, we didn't get to visit art galleries. 
So exactly. this was the last visit I had to an exhibition. Um, and it was, uh, I went with my daughter, who wasn't familiar with Andy Warhol. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> this work of his it's good isn't it? And it yeah and it was when as you know it was when he, he didn't want to make art anymore he said i'm having such a lovely time i'm going to parties and i really i just don't want to make anything anymore i don't know what to do <laughs> he never knew what to do did he and so he filled the, the room with helium balloons <laughs> but I, I it's such a good thing i really i really like that one because I, I saw that just before lockdown as well i did, did a review of it for our top 10 and it's it's really cool i really like that um yeah. Yeah, and I it was the only work my daughter liked. She didn't like the rest at all. She had quite an antipathy towards his work. Really? really? Yeah. It was quite good because you can hear the Velvet Underground playing in the background, can't you? Yeah. We got that. Now, this is Brixton. And this is coming back late one night, just before the lockdown. Okay. Time. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Absolutely. So I asked this man if he'd mind me taking the video and he didn't mind. I thought how incredible what he was doing with those materials, just two empty milk cartons. Yeah, exactly. And That's, yeah. Hmm. It reminded me of some very early minimalist music. Or something. Yeah, absolutely. It's, so... it's also about austerity and poverty, isn't it? Oh, totally. It it's powerful. Um, <laughs> But it's kind of, it's kind of weird because because you're 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 sort of uh, having that straight after the Andy Warhol you're already building up a kind of um like a sort of narrative of sound and vision that's like something I yeah can't describe, but. well the sort of containers now this I made it was almost like it well it was just before the lockdown and I was thinking very much. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I was fascinated by science and space travel. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Were you at all? Oh, I mean, I loved Star Wars and all that kind of stuff, but um, mm. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, the idea of space travel would be quite frightened, in all honesty, of actually going into space. Yeah, I'm, it's something that I'm, I'm not interested in now. Uh, really? Not, not really, no. Something changed, and but at this time... Uh, I was, and I. But what did intrigue me yeah. was that I read this news that the uh, Voyager spacecraft yeah, had yeah. just left the universe, <laughs> our universe. It's quite freaky. And I, I'll read you what I wrote for this. Can I? It's just a couple Definitely. of sentences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says Voyager. In 1977, the two Voyager spacecraft were launched. I was 10, one of 4.2 billion people on Earth. Eight years ago and two years ago, they each left this solar system. And the music is from the Golden Records, the music you'll hear on this that they carry. Okay. Uh, Dark is the Night, written and performed by Blind Willie Johnson. Crane's Nest, performed by Yoro Yamaguchi. And The Bell, performed by Lorenzo Barcelata and the Maria. And the last, the numbers you'll see at the end of this are from a counter on a computer recording the births, the last digits. Okay. Recording the births, uh, the rate of birth in the, on the planet. Okay. Let's go for it. Of, of, of deaths and obviously
obviously this has changed, but I just thought it's incredible yeah. this this vessel going out, leaving our time space, Bizarre. and um, carrying art on it, yeah. carrying music. You know, yeah, that's, that's what weird, we thought actually, in the seventies we would send. <laughs> <laughs> what would we send now? <laughs> An iPhone. And you wonder if I was thinking, you know, is this what's going to be left of, of you know humanity? <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Just those bits of music. It's quite freaky. But meanwhile, I was looking at other art, and you might recognise this artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Picasso. You know, just before lockdown, you know, I had this wonderful opportunity to encounter these things close up. Oh. Uh, the, the, the kind of immediacy of this of, of his work and the way it's bled differently and, you know, chancely. Mm. There's a sort of haste or urgency in Picasso that's very interesting. Oh, it's this extraordinary. Is a, sorry. Oh no, I find Picasso extraordinary. Like, like it's like you can see him thinking in everything he does. Mm. Um, and when I was younger, I never much regarded these early things, but it's very beautiful, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And there is yeah. a sentimentality there, but there's also something quite poignant and brutal, as I believe. Well, there's something poignant <laughs> with the clowns and the sort of performers. Mm. It's strange. And this is the ground of one of his etchings, and again, it's urgency. Huh. I don't know if it was his drawing or not, but. The plate hadn't been completely polished, and you can oh, really? see the outlines here of a landscape. You know, oh, that's that quite to be Rubbed out, and hmm. uh, so I was also looking at these constable sketches, very small, of a storm at sea. Yeah, yeah. I I know. Closely at these. Intriguing. Quite stunning, isn't it? Oh, that, I mean, they're they're they're, they're... how small are those? They're tiny, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what are they? They're about the size of a sheet of A4 paper. Yeah. Huh. Oh, really cool. Yeah, really so cool. then uh, lockdown comes, and this was sort of one of the communal areas. I was the last person to leave it in my workplace, and these were the two papers, <laughs> the papers that were sitting there, <laughs> cool to be kind and time to get antisocial. <laughs> so, you know, how does one react to this? Well, how people react to this is my local corner shop. I'm very fond of the guy who works there. He's from Sri Lanka. Yeah, yeah. And the reaction to this global pan this pandemic, this problem, was that each household tried to get as much toilet paper oh, and yeah. pasta as they could. Exactly. Uh, that was the sense. And he is very witty. And so up here on the top shelf used to be the toilet roll. And what he did have was always cat litter. So <laughs> he... <laughs> and about this time, I made this little painting, about six by, uh, six by 12. Okay. And I called it... Um, Running on and running, running out. So it's one mark, and huh. obviously, as you make the mark, the pigment runs out, doesn't it? And yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of sense of progress to me and um, entropy. And what? Um, so, so what do you use? Is that ink or is that paint? Uh, it's both. It's watercolor and ink. Watercolor and ink. Hmm. Intriguing. Did you make numerous ones of these, or just like a? I'm, no, I made a few, um, yeah. some in one session, some in another, but I don't think any of the others were particularly uh, interesting to me. So okay. I do actually, the good thing about working at this scale and speed is you, you can destroy a lot without it costing a hell of a lot. Well, So I do destroy quite a bit. A lot of the people I've spoken to make a huge amount of work and destroy it. It's quite interesting. Do they? Yeah. Mm, interesting, yeah. Much more than I thought so. Um, it's not... Ooh. What I would have thought. It's not. Hey, it's not how I would have thought. Uh, many people would do it, but it's uh, more more people than you think seem to make a huge amount of work, and then they destroy it. And but quite a lot. But I'm also interested how many people just make so much work as well. Hmm. Why do you think people need to destroy so much? Hmm? Oh, I suppose a lot of them. It's it's they're literally just editing what they're going through. Yeah. But, and I guess it means we're looking for something somehow, but we don't quite know what it is yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hmm. It's quite intriguing, actually. I mean, I don't really destroy anything, but I will paint over it. Yeah, well, I think that's a very interesting part of destruction, that it is part of making something. Well, Even the decision to put this colour wash across here means hmm. I've decided against the white sheet of paper. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And there is, there is a weird destructive thing about creating stuff, strangely enough. Yeah, and I've destroyed other options for myself. Mm. Like I said, I'm painting at night. I'm not looking at things in that moment, you know, other than what I'm doing. 
uh, yeah. That's a, oh yeah, so then we come to this crazy moment where you're getting all these ridiculous messages coming out, aren't you? Yeah. Oh God, these were fantastic, weren't they? Just hysterical. <laughs> and um, confusing messages, even for children, you know. <laughs> so this is the park. Oh. Oh, this is a little, a little work I made in the park called Self Portrait, and the music from Bob Dylan's album Self Portrait. Okay, go, go, go. Cool. That's really cool. I mean, uh, you know, what? I'm I'm really enjoying these uh, this the sort of kind of crazy um, uh, videos. Yeah, it's funny. Maybe it was just a way of processing this odd moment where you're walking across the field and you're going to put a mask on and queue outside a <laughs> supermarket. And what were people doing? Even a great wordsmith like you know Bob ran out of words sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so I found out I was an SI unit. That was interesting. Okay. So this is oh, that's a, <laughs> this is a portrait, uh, self portrait, self portrait as a, as a social distancing unit. I mean, what is the artist's position? Is he does he sit between two others? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so the ground again, you know, the ground it was baking hot, wasn't it? And it I was, was looking yeah. at the ground in the park, and then I I started in the daytime for yeah. nine years. It had been really beautiful garden the neighbours had made. It had been lying waste. So I started oh, wow. digging it up. And I had this huge <laughs> application for these weeds. I mean, these weeds are incredible. Between the brambles and briars mm. and these sort of lovage-like plants that would go down a foot and the nettles that made a mat. But, oh, yeah. you know, I, I got to this point and was burning all this stuff up. So talking about destruction and making, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, and this is the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. I spent quite a bit of time looking at those fires and clearing them away. And then inside, you know, a lot of people were doing this, weren't they? Yeah. They started gardening. Um, and I was recording these little things coming on, which seemed to be miraculous, really. And they did come to fruition. Huh. There was my daughter's pumpkin with a premonition of Halloween. <laughs> two, two oh, wow, that's there. really good. And then I thought, well, I was looking at this and I thought, this looks like my painting. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's um, strange. Yeah. Go on, go on. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's quite intriguing. What where you where you'd put the lines of the um oh god, that's weird. Where you'd put the um the line of the string across the earth. Yes. Hmm. And uh, uh, that's where I was planting the potatoes. And then I came back to this. This is uh, Rob, the only bronze sculpture I've made. Oh yeah. Oh god, and that's I'm sweet. Thinking, about 25 years ago, it's a carved potato. Seriously? And then, yeah. And oh. then this is the bronze. Uh, uh, a really lovely friend of mine, who's a very skilled casting technician, made a, a lost wax cast. Really? So the original potato I still have and made two bronze 
bronzes of this. Extraordinary. And the so I was in my, again, very early 20s, and a teacher of mine and friend at the time said he thought it was probably a self-portrait. Okay. And maybe I should make some more of them. I can see what he meant. And it's taken me sort of 25 years to get round to it. But, uh, As ever. Yeah. yeah. So I did. I did this one. Uh, and this is Master Potato Head. And I just recorded <laughs> it first week. Um, oh, wow. So wait, this is recent then? This is... Yeah. Yeah. So this is during the lockdown. I thought, right, I'll just, you know, return to an old idea. And some people really hate this, you know. They say, can't you get rid of this? This is horrible. Why? It I just... don't know. It just it divides the critics. <laughs> <laughs> not, any, not hardly anyone's seen it, to be honest. Th but, so wait, yeah. so the potato is, is disintegrating as we're looking at it. Oh, yeah, but the one I have that the cast was made from is still there. There's a certain point where it hardens. And it and, just uh, and yeah. it goes back. Quite intriguing. What did you actually carve it with? Just a little tiny, oh, tiny a, knife. A vegetable knife. A vegetable instrument. Yeah. yeah, it's quite. Um, you've done it very neatly for a vegetable knife. Thank you. I'm not really a sculptor, but the second one is a bit better. You get to learn something. Yeah, you? yeah. It's really yeah. cool. I, I like it in the. I, I like it in the sake cup as well. If that's what it's. Yes, it is. That's, yeah. that's what it sits in. And the original one sat in that same vessel. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah. It's quite intriguing. Now, I was looking at this. Isn't this a beautiful painting by Chardin? Just one of those very bad images. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lovely one. No, that. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Amazing painter. I can remember seeing his works in the Louvre, and you come through these huge history paintings, mm. and then you come to Chardin, and you think, wow, all right. So quite, I also quite... started recording some of the paintings, you know, we're talking about this media and the mm. phone and stuff, and you can do so much so simply. So yeah. I would just look at the surface of the painting and, you know, I could transform the colours or the, okay. you know, it was sort of one screen transposed on another. And I thought, well, hmm. you know, these photographic and filmic techniques, movement in them is is kind of interesting. Well, what, what, what did you make that on? You made that? The phone. On, just on the phone? Yeah. How yeah, you, you can do all this stuff, can't you? How did you, you and you superimpose the two images on the phone? Yeah, it's, it's just all really a box of tricks, isn't it? Yeah, and on the phone. It's nice so, though. And wait, and so what? What? What's the original image? Is that that's just a painting? It's a painting you know? of yours. Or? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Intriguing. And it looked sort of fire-like, and it reminded me, you know, again, this mm. looking at the archive. Yeah. It reminded me of this thing I made a long time ago, three of these, and they were made to be burnt. You know? And when oh, we were really? talking about destruction and yeah, creation, yeah, yeah. you know, that's, fire is a very good symbol, isn't it? Hmm. It's actually quite intriguing. The, um, the fire, the, yeah, the, I, it's, ugh, it's really weird. The, 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 the destruction in making stuff is quite strange. Uh, this is a really early painting, perhaps 1990. Okay. So I thought, well, I've done all these odd different things, but it seems so similar. Okay. So again, how did you make this one practically? How did you? Well, this is this is destroyed now, but it's about a meter square. Okay. And I made a brush that could work in one stroke to to cover the, oh, okay. um, the surface. Yeah. Intriguing. So 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 there's quite a thing. You've always had that thing also for a sort of one movement or one. Mm. experience taking place. Mm. Quite it's strange, strange, isn't it? That um, maybe our minds are quite mm. <laughs> tiny. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, it's quite, it? uh, it's quite intriguing though, because because it, as you, it sort of builds into that whole destruction thing as well, the one, the one thing producing it. Yeah, maybe you're trying. Yeah, it sounds a bit cheesy, but maybe, maybe there's a moment that sort of is both destruction and creation. It's just trying to find that exact moment where they exist. Maybe. Sorry. Anyway, do, do, do go on about the the, the the next picture. Yeah. Oh no. So this was just thinking of the archive, and this man was a painter, a friend of my father, and that's me on the right. <laughs> and he taught me to paint, and I can remember this day really? even now. Painting watercolors, I was painting on the stones. Uh, were you? you were painting uh, on the stones. Yeah, that that yeah. kind of sort of pre premonitions your practice in a way. Maybe, and um, watercolor. <laughs> and watercolor. 
He taught me oil painting. I'm about seven now. And he was very, very poor, um, modest man. Yeah. Not much liked in this small Scottish village uh, where he um, yeah. where he worked, you know. He was seen as an eccentric. You know? Huh. <laughs> he looks really friendly, but... Yeah. He looks happy. So this is another early work, and again, I was just looking at these, you know, I think, again, a lot of us were looking at the archive, weren't we? Mm. Thinking about similarities of inscription, and I found myself more and more in the garden this time in the evenings with yeah. fire. Company. Check it out. That's cool. Yeah, there's little traces. Yeah, the little traces. Absolutely, I like that. Hmm. It's quite funny. The traces, they almost look animated in this kind of way. Hmm. Yes, I don't know what the technology is doing to what you're seeing, what I'm seeing. Well, you know what? That, that's another freaky layer of the whole thing because it yeah. goes on top of it. Hmm. So these were some paintings I made round about this time. Did you take part in the artist support pledge at all? Yeah, yeah, I put a few things on the uh, on Instagram. Yeah, did yeah. you did you put these on there? Yeah, no, no interest really. <laughs> you some never friends know. liked them. Um, one went to oh. a good home, and then yeah, I was trying. Um, for some reason, I'm I'm rather pleased with this painting. Slightly larger than most. How big is this one? Well, I mean, when I say slightly no. larger, what is that? Maybe about 30. Okay. Go, go, go back, because it's quite interesting, because that one's got the same uh, division down the centre, hasn't it, as the, as the one behind it? Did you want me to go back to... No, 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 just, just this one here, because you've got the same centre division as, as the plants with the string and the, mm. the painting we saw at the very beginning. And it's a sort of division where it, it's not... It's hard, isn't it? But it's also that it's not completely divided. No. It might even be a repair. I don't know. Oh, that's quite an interesting idea. I have wondered about that. Or, but it's certainly to do with this field or, or, or ground. Well, I mean, that's quite interesting. Cause if, if it's a repair, it's kind of rebuilding this destruction, sort of reversing it or going yeah. the other way. That I was interested. It's a bit of an anomaly. Yeah. That this is a painting during this lockdown time, and I don't often give titles, but sometimes. And this oh, is yeah. called Vessel. Okay. It looked very much like a. I don't know if it does to you, but yeah, like a vessel. It does. But it's got the. I mean, yeah, it's got the same um, centre, either reconstruction or destruction. Oh, that's quite intriguing. Oh, that's all yes. of them. A dear friend of mine gave me this little book. Um, which could come from Japan, little concertina book. This is not much taller than my thumb, say. Really? Um, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, about that high. Yeah, yeah. I've been sitting for um, for a couple of years before I knew what to do with it. And then mm. at the end of painting, one evening, I, I did this. And and then I bought a couple of concertina books because I thought, oh, this is a thing. And yeah, yeah, no, yeah. couldn't do anything with them. <laughs> <laughs> the nature of the madness mm. but it's um are you influ influenced by that whole japanese kind of thing yes yeah it's for a long time been a fascination of mine the, the um, japanese culture or japanese art or the sort of mentality well i think i mean i've only been once and i was and that was about i don't know about five years ago or so okay um and I thought, oh dear, I'm going to a place that I've sort of dreamt by reading all this literature and philosophy, and yeah, I'd yeah. probably be sorely disappointed. Yeah. Um, and and how did you find it? Oh, stunning! Uh, stunning, quite yeah. a revelation. But I wanted to get into the countryside. Mm. Um, I wasn't hugely interested in Tokyo, Tokyo and yeah. you know, I know some people are very energized and excited by all that yeah, modernity. Yeah. And did you did did you get out? Did you go to the countryside? Yes. Yes, and went to an onsen for a night and walked around the hills. Nice. No, I've, yeah. I've been to Japan a, a couple of times. Um, uh -huh. Where did uh, you go? So, obviously, Tokyo, um, Kyoto, all the classic places. But uh, then when I went most recently with my wife, we went to, I've totally forgotten, but it was a weird, maybe it was called Konichiwa. It was like, it was like in, it was just in the country. It was just a strange place in the country. 
where you'd mm. walk on these little boardwalks over rivers and there <laughs> were constantly streams of um, uh, school groups going, saying hello to us the whole time, which was quite sweet. Um, and then Hiroshima. Did you go to Hiroshima? No, I didn't. I went to Tokyo and then over to Kanazawa and that, that was it. That was it. Uh, yeah, I would love to see more. Oh, yeah. I think what I find very powerful is, is, is their sense of the beauty and the ephemeral. You know, yeah, yeah. That. You see that there, don't you? Um, yeah. Um, I, 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 an I, inversion I, of a lot of our values, you know, mm. the, the beauty of, of things aging, of natural processes. That mm. I think in the West we have this desire to constantly combat, and, of course, that's senseless. You can't. <laughs> no, no, exactly. And the other thing I always think about, those the Japanese things, is all, everything's set up a lot of the time so that when you look out of the windows or the doors or whatever, um, it's, 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 everything's framed outside, isn't it? Like a perfect picture. Get... And yes, yes, stunning, especially these tea houses and the yeah. gardens. Mm. But also the everyday. Mm. Mm. Well, that's really interesting. So interesting what you say as well about um like like we have we do have, have this obsession for new things, don't we? But I remember I'm sure it's like an Indian culture or something, had more of a like a red Indian culture, had like an obsession for all the things that have been used, they were much more valuable than Yes. Mm. I like things that you know, I take a lot of photographs of things around around that I see that have been worn or marked by mm. by time. Um mm. interesting. And I think the process I was describing of my painting activity, it, it, it wasn't based on it, but isn't it strangely close to the way Oriental work might be made? Yes, exactly. exactly. You know, it, it would be made quickly and it would be made in a sitting and, you know, so it would. a set of circumstances seemed to have led me to this. Um, hmm. uh, oh, yeah, I was tipped off. Would you like to see another little video? Yeah, I love it. I'm loving the videos. They're really cool. I was tipped off that the window cleaner was visiting. He's an expert uh, <laughs> window cleaner, Lewis Obi, if anybody wants to employ him. <laughs> Let's see, uh, quiet. <laughs> it's... He's good, isn't he? He's really good. I mean, he's done that a few times, hasn't he? Oh, look at that, that's neat. It's, oh, it's cool. <laughs> That's really good. I like the fact that once once it's wiped away, it's still kind of um, misty. Oh, that's good. That's really cool. It's really cool. You, it's, it's funny, you know, when you wander around the, the, the streets and there's all these shops that have shut down and the inside of them, they've painted with that, you know, the glass, they've just got those big swirly sort of white paintings on them. Mm. I always mm. think, oh, it just looks wonderful, doesn't it? Like that big white brush mm. swirling around. You get a real sense of the movement of the arm and everything. Yes, 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 indeed. And it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I like the glasses. This is, this is just uh, everyday life, you know. Yeah, exactly. These things go on, don't they? And you have to, it's harder to get these things done. Exactly. So that, that was the square we saw at the beginning, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's very cool. <laughs> oh, this is this existential moment, isn't it, where your phone goes, try again, try again, <laughs> try again. You have oh, got that was trying to paint outside, I mentioned to you. Yeah. It didn't really work. <laughs> that was what came out of it. I'm interested in it. I'm interested in it, but I wasn't. You know, can, can we can just go back? Can we go back to the picture outside? I was just quite intrigued by the. Sorry. Uh, we can have a quick look at the picture outside again. I was quite intrigued yeah. by the, the different materials you had there. Yeah. Because. The courgettes. That was just incidental. Oh, the courgettes. They're good. The gardens behind. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got yeah. So you've got oh. So you've got the ink, and then yeah. That's quite intriguing. And what? this. I've done a few times, but the paper's laid down on board. Yeah, I was trying to work it out. Uh, and it's been built up, and there were many paintings on that. Yeah. Um, that were then covered and done again. You know, okay. As you were saying, you know, you're painting over. Mm. Mm. In this case, I'm putting another surface on top. You can kind of see there. Oh, um, yeah. So do you, is what's, do you keep what's in the background? The other surfaces remain there? 
Is no. He... No. Ah, okay, but you can see where they've been. At the edge. Hmm. Intriguing. So, no, it's not like an imprimatur or something. Yeah. I mean, it's there. It's there. It's not visible. Yeah. Um, I got away to Scotland. Oh, nice. Where I grew up. And had a swim in this loch and reconnected with nature, which was much needed. Yeah, and, exactly. No. And then, yeah, <laughs> these paintings, they're eight inches square. Okay. And they're a series of three. Yeah. And okay. um, <laughs> I was pleased with the ink and the watercolour here in the paper. The combination seemed, for me, personally seemed to... So this is another series of three. So when you've got the darker edge around some of those little shapes, is it that, that that's just the nature of how the materials work? You haven't gone around and oh, drawn around the edges of any of these things? No, no. it's not that sort of work. No. Mm. My daughter said to me, Dad, it's very strange you did that, you know, like the concertina book. You know, most people would start drawing in the corner and quite carefully. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's quite intriguing. This is Scotland, a place I've walked through before. Okay, that looks cool. Oh, that's good. Mm. Oh, because these also, yeah, some of those have a sense of waterfall to them, don't they? Well, yes, I mean, that's what I thought, but I thought that retrospectively, mm. not at the time of making them. I wasn't thinking about waterfalls, but yeah. And these seem to relate more again to that division and maybe the yeah. page and book and inscribing them. And again, the edge here is um, is kind of uh, asserted and then yeah. questioned or reasserted. Something going on. Well, it's, they've got a lovely sort of translucent sense to them, haven't they? So this is the um, mm. painting I made relatively recently towards the end of that period and this is on locked paper okay it's quite small. and that's a paper that can, that's, this is people making it it's only made in a smallish area uh in um nepal oh man Katmandu check it out Valley. and it's a very ancient uh, it's made from laurel leaves leaves uh, or, no sorry not leaves it's, i think it's the bark isn't it oh the bark man check it out but it, it's been used for Centuries, it lasts for thousands. Yeah, it looks like it a lot. <laughs> we use it for documents. And there we are, that's the painting that's sitting behind me. I think I'm going to stop sharing things now. Okay. Um, that was, uh, I, I, you know what, it's it's actually a little bit like the, um, I think that the interview has been a little bit like a sort of um, art art experience, as it were. Because hmm. it, it's, 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 it's sort of kind of like a, a sort of filmic um journey through your lockdown experience well that's what i thought i'd try and present and i i like the spur you gave me <laughs> and inviting me to do this because it made me look at these things again that's always good for us isn't it <laughs> it is it is it is but i actually i actually find it very interesting when you talk a lot of the time it's a bit like everything you look at you're seeing you know like you were talked about the spoons in the drawer everything you look at you're looking at as if it's an artwork, and it's it's a bit like your your mind is turning what you see into art. So, mm. in some ways, I was thinking when, when when people are looking at your pictures, do you do you sort of feel they're finishing the picture by their imaginative action upon it? Absolutely, I think once I have painted it and made a decision about whether it goes out or not, then it is completed by the viewer. I don't want to be prescriptive mm. in that way. Mm. Uh, and I'm, it was Duchamp's point, wasn't it, very much, that um, yeah. the artwork was closed or opened up by the viewer. Yeah. Huh, intriguing. But, I mean, I, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, you, you, They've got to look at it. I always think of, in a way, once I've finished my paintings, I look at them, and then I find these little roots through them, like little journeys. <laughs> Then you know, like you think, oh, I like going through this bit here. I like going down there and over there, and it's like that's almost when you build your little friendship with them. Um, mm. And you might have been surprised by what you've done, even it can take you yeah. in a certain direction. Yeah. And also, you know, I, I have, you know, 
you get these negative comments too, don't you? Yeah. Because there are people, of course, who have no, um, and it's fair enough. We don't all feel the same way. I mean, I can remember somebody, a friend, actually, saying this is the most pathetic thing I've seen in my life. <laughs> they were a friend. <laughs> Curious? No, no. I mean, no, I said you mean that pejoratively. <laughs> but also, they can be mistaken for other objects in the world, as you said. One might see something in the world and see it through a particular lens and give it a different value. Equally, what you make can be um, given different values, uh, dismissed, thrown away, or yeah. rarefied. You know, this is something that happens around the artwork, doesn't it? It does. Mm. But I mean, I mean that's a strange thing in, in itself, isn't it? Because some artworks are then carted off in sort of you know with white gloves and stored away, worth millions of pounds, which is a weird thing in itself. But what we don't know about is the future. Mm. You think of somebody like Vermeer; you mm. could argue that it was with photography that he became so fascinating um, mm. again and was forgotten. Yeah. And probably quite well in his time. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> true. We don't know what we're going to find interesting or useful. No, <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. But um, it's quite interesting. So, so do you feel sort of privileged to be an artist in that in that you've got the ability to look at things and see a sort of deeper, more resonant artistic vision of stuff just in the everyday as it were in the, the well, ev being an artist is a privilege mm. some people find that despicable um, <laughs> uh, well, I think it is a privilege it's wonderful to be involved in these things to, to, to look at people and uh, mm. and now I think in the past artists have often felt very alienated this is another point in relation to technology and the phone and uh, the Instagram and such like you read accounts of people working way back and they felt so isolated, uh, yeah. ghettoized or just became eccentrics. <laughs> and now we can talk to people. I can talk to somebody the other side of the planet who's making something that really interests me. No, yeah, interests. yeah, yeah. I suppose that is a... I mean, it's, it's odd. I've, I've felt very isolated from the art world for years. Um, and they just feel it's taking place somewhere further away from you. <laughs> I don't know if you've well, ever felt like that, but um, I think the art, the art world is something else. I think it was well, Gerhard Richter once said, "It's like stamp collecting, and art happens elsewhere." And, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is. A, it is a weird thing. I feel I feel less isolated from it now. But um, in, in what way? I think I mean doing the interviews. Um, yes, becoming more involved. I, I mean, ironically, in doing things that aren't actually making the art, but uh, interviewing all the different people, especially over lockdowns, it's been quite strange. Uh, lockdowns made the interviews quite strange because it's obviously all online, but um, everybody's open, strangely open and chatty, and there's sort of less time pressures than normal. So the interviews sort of ramble on in in a nice sort of fluid fashion, um, and people more time I mean yeah. even for looking at art and mm. there does seem to be an odd democratization that's happened mm. if we think of how at the same time Black Lives Matter has been an issue now yeah. there's a lot of talk about diversity in the workplace there seems to have been some mm. it, it's maybe sad that it's taken a pandemic <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a reaction hasn't it I think yeah, yeah. Mm. it's a it's a yeah. It's a strange yeah. It's a strange thing. I mean yeah. I mean yes. It's it's strange. But I mean the pandemic obviously is not the ideal way you'd want it to resolve itself, is it? But but I suppose we were just obsessed with you know commuting and going back and forth and doing all this stuff, weren't we? Completely. Um, well, the rest the planet had, and the, I think the hubris too that especially was going around before, like we have destroyed the planet, we have destroyed, we well, saw that the planet actually recovers quite quickly. Mm. What we've jeopardized are ourselves as a species. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and it's yet another instance of hubris to say, look what we have done. Yes. Um, but, yeah. 
But uh, it was wasn't it wonderful to think that apparently you could see fish in Venetian canals, you could, you know, mm. and all, the whales could talk to each other. Yeah. And there was a seismologist who said, "I found it fascinating what she said. We can hear the planet better. We can predict further and more accurately, especially in urban areas." Hmm. True. Yeah. I mean, I still remember we, we, we'd go to walking around Richmond Park in the middle of the major lockdown, but and all these little animals would just be hopping around and birds and things flapping mm. up to you. It was much more animal stuff than there used to be, for want of a better explanation. But, um, mm. yeah. Well, I think we underestimate our fellow creatures, don't we? I was reading an account of Chernobyl, and apparently the old women knew something was wrong before it was announced, because the earthworms went down. Really? And the chickens weren't eating. And they thought, why are the chickens not eating? Why are they not getting any food? Intriguing. <laughs> Extraordinary thing, which I can't explain. No. Something had shifted in the environment and the creatures were sensitised to it. Yeah. It just shows how desensitised we are to it. Yeah. Hmm. Intriguing. So, so do you feel, I mean, I, I, in a, in a, for want of a silly question, but do you feel lockdown's brought you closer to doing your art as you'd like to? I think, it, 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 as I said, it seemed to reaffirm that this um, way of proceeding for the time being. Yeah. Because I did afternoon paintings, I did outdoor paintings, I yeah. did morning paintings. And um, and I thought, you know, it's worth testing those things because they could be willful eccentricity. Yeah, yeah. Pretension. They could be a lot of things, couldn't they? Yeah. But it seemed to be uh, a way that's working hmm. currently. It's quite interesting. It's very interesting, actually, because I, I don't think I'd feel... I don't know, I wouldn't feel as happy painting at night, I don't think. But Picasso always used to paint at night, I thought, because you can see the strong um, shadows of the electric lights in a lot of the picture. Well, I think he just painted all the time. Well, you're probably right. He did just literally did it <laughs> all the time. I think you're right. <laughs> and when you said about looking at things and transforming them into art, I mean, I'm sure you do the same and take oh, of your camera and look at things. But, yeah, it's... Uh, it, it can be obsession too, can't it? it well, it's, you know, it's, we uh, need to do something else and relate to other things yes, too. Yes, I, I think what's quite interesting though is almost consciously being a. I mean, like you say, yes, you, you could, I could look out of the window now and you can see the Rothko vibe of the different shapes of it in front of me and the, the colours changing and you can get those sense of those different paintings through the window. But it, it's quite interesting to think of more consciously, consistently existing, sort of in a waking meditative state where you're seeing things as art functioning all the time. Mm. Have you found it's changed your practice a lot? This uh, well, I did a lot of these interviews, uh, strangely enough. So, um, and the interviews did change the practice in that um, I spoke to a lot of people who were doing watercolours because it was more accessible. They couldn't get to the studio. Um, and I started doing some watercolour painting, which I'd never really done before. I'd done like gouache and stuff like that, but I'd never really tried to use watercolour as watercolour and let it be more translucent. Um, and that <laughs> sounds sad, but chatting to people who'd used masking tape and became slightly obsessed to using masking tape in some of the pictures. Yeah. But I mean, strange little things like that that I hadn't really thought of. Um, it has changed it in that way. And, and strangely enough, I started painting different things like realistic things and stuff like that. But a bit like you, I found that at the end of the day, I'm still going to come back to the abstract paintings. It seems to be what I'm more in tune with. Maybe there are things we can't escape for one reason or <laughs> things that, that do compel us and they might be quite small things. That's interesting. I suppose in a way, maybe it affected me less because I was all, you know, people were saying, I'm going to have to work at home. I'm going to have to, you know, I can't get into, well, I was already doing that. Well, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, so, is, is there any, I mean, we should probably round it up now, although I've absolutely loved chatting. It's been really interesting. Um, uh, is well, there anything thank else? thank you so much for the opportunity. No, no, no. I mean, is there anything else you'd like? <laughs> interesting. <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to add? Any any final um, summation mm. of the? Mm. <laughs> so awful question, really. But 
I think not. I really <laughs> our conversation and the process. Thank you. Exactly. Man. Exactly. I, I, I think I, I think in, in in reality that the conversation itself was like an artwork, which I really enjoyed. Um, and I enjoyed being taken through your lockdown journey, especially with the videos and the images and the things. It was fascinating, and I hope people actually watch it through as a kind of artwork, not just an interview. Hmm. Or maybe they'll re-edit it, skip backwards and forwards. <laughs> Yeah, well, exactly. It's out of our control once again. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Thank you, Simon, so much. Really enjoyed it. Okay, cheers then. Bye.